Good morning. Uh, this is the 6 a.m. press conference for the CZU complex. My name is Jonathan Cox, Deputy Chief with CAL FIRE San Mateo Santa Cruz Unit and Line Officer on the incident. Uh, as always, if you could just mute your telephones uh, and any devices you might have uh, and take any conversations away from the press conference area. We also ask that you keep your masks on at all times during this press conference. Uh, and we will have a moment at the end to ask questions of all the representatives up here, uh, as well as some time for one-on-one -on -one conversations after the conference is over. Uh, just a quick update this morning for the 6 o'clock numbers. The CZU Lightning Complex is now 80,080,137 acres in size. Uh, we're staying at 19% containment, and there are still 24,000 plus structures that are threatened by the incident. Uh, unfortunately, this morning we can uh, confirm that there are now 538 structures that have been destroyed in this fire, 11 of which are in San Mateo County, 527 of those structures destroyed are in Santa Cruz County. There is a website, as uh, Chief Deputy Clark mentioned last night, the Santa Cruz County uh, has put up showing uh, people where and, and what those addresses are online. Tonight, as of this morning, we have 1,697 uh, personnel assigned to the incident. And for an uh, overview and an update on what the actual operations that are going on out in the field, uh, CAL FIRE Incident Management Team 3 Ops Section Chief Mark Brunt. Good morning. Uh, the past couple days, we've been able to make uh, significant progress on our firefight. Uh, we've been able to establish more lines, continue to improve those lines that we have established and uh, getting another day closer to, uh, to extinguishing this fire. As you can see, we have uh, some on the map some uh, black line. Uh, what that signifies is that we have the fire extinguished, we're holding it, we have lines established around it, and, it, and we feel very, very confident that that has been secured. And again, that's up there in what we call Division of the Gulf and Kilo. That's an area that uh, is, was critical so that uh, we didn't have any spread uh, to the northeast and, and threatening Santa Clara County. So we buttoned that up, and that's in uh, a patrol and mop up type status. Uh, moving along in the north zone again, uh, Vitana Park, we do have some uh, active flame on the ridge. We do have uh, lines established, as you can see on the map, and we're slowly let that fire creep down as part of our strategy uh, so that we can uh, get in and fully extinguish that fire. I anticipate within the next couple of days, and with the weather we're expecting, that, that uh, we should be successful in that, that endeavor and put some more uh, black lighting on the map. Uh, moving down, again, we're continuing with uh, with some full extinguishment of the of the fire throughout the uh, the western portion of the fire. Community of Davenport, uh, we're looking at uh, with our infrastructure, looking at re-energizing that uh, with power here uh, with it today, if if not sooner, and um, and then again, uh, our lines holding those lines above that community and uh, taking advantage of the weather to to start uh, full extinguishment of any sort of fire uh, sitting above that community. Down to the south, again, uh, our, our control lines are holding to the south, as well as our, obviously our secondary line. And uh, so we do have uh, really good protection for the community of Santa Cruz and the UC campus. Moving up the nine corridor, which has been a challenge for us with the communities of, uh, of Felton, Ben Loman, Boulder Creek, Davenport, uh, over here, uh, then we've, we've uh, been able to get some more good control lines up above uh, on the, uh, the, the fire. Um, we're continuing to, to work and improve that. We've got some good line and, uh, and, and blacken the line, extinguish the fire above a good portion of Felton. Today's operation has been critical. They've been preparing and working on this uh, for the past two days, really. And uh, what we have a plan on doing uh, is later this afternoon, early evening, is to, uh, our line's been constructed. We have the preparations in place to do a, a burn operation, which will uh, blacken the line, bring the fire up to the fire that's hung up on the, onto the, uh, the ridge top. That will eliminate that, uh, that issue, and what that will do is create a very nice uh, barrier uh, for the, the fire around the community of Felton. That will then uh, button up that part of the fire above Felton, so that is excellent news. It's gonna take a couple days once we do that to continue to mop up, pick up the hot spots and then render that safe and get our utility uh, companies in there to, uh, to do their job. Uh, as we finish that, we'll be moving up towards Ben Lomond, and that line will actually come to the south end of Ben Lomond, so that line will not only protect Felton, but the bottom end of Ben Lomond as we continue, continue to progress. Up uh, above uh, Ben Lomond and into Boulder Creek, we're continuing to work uh, diligently up there. We have a lot of resources above uh, uh, 
Boulder Creek uh, from CAL FIRE and our uh, other allied agencies. They're working diligently, ex uh, putting in the line, again, very difficult terrain, and working among a, a number of structures, and uh, we're going to have a lot of success, and in the coming days, uh, we're looking at trying to uh, get that completed just like we are in these other communities. So we're marching north uh, and preparing as we go ahead of time and uh, implementing those operations, that strategy. Uh, by noon, uh, looking really good. Uh, again, painstaking process, a lot of homes in there. We're working around all those homes, getting uh, control lines put in, uh, extinguishing any fire around structures, and then the big thing is opening the roads into the interior of the fire. With all the trees that have come down, uh, the power lines and so forth, we've been able to uh, establish a group that's gone in starting yesterday, getting deep into some of these road systems. Some of them are a little bit more work than others. But that uh, group is, uh, is working in doing that. We're working with uh, county roads and a variety of other agencies to get in. And then once we get in and we render it safe, getting the utility companies in right behind us so that they can start uh, repairing and, and putting back that infrastructure. Uh, we're doing the same thing on Highway 236, uh, working with Caltrans and doing the same kind of operation so we can start opening that and getting interior uh, to these other areas. Once we can also get interior, our damage inspection teams can get in and start doing their jobs uh, so we can get... Uh, that taken care of as well. So it's a multifaceted effort uh, is part of this extinguishment uh, process. Uh, from our air program, the air is looking very favorable with the weather, so we're going to be flying once again our aircraft. The past few days we've, uh, we've topped out the amount of hours we can fly on our aircraft. Every day we're, we've been dropping more and more water. As of yesterday, uh, they dropped uh, from the, our six copters 256,000 gallons of water in one day. That's pretty significant. We're timing out our aircraft. That's significant. And uh, every day we're seeing more and more, and that's in the support of our ground troops taking care of those hot spots and so forth. To this point, our copters have dropped uh, over 1.6 million gallons of water since the beginning of this event. So uh, we're using all the tools that we have available to us uh, to work on extinguishing this fire and getting uh, everybody's back, uh, their lives back to normal. Thank you. Uh, speaking next from the Santa Cruz County Sheriff's Office is Chief Deputy Chris Clark. Well, good morning. Uh, in terms of some positive news, again, uh, continuing with uh, that, that, you know, the, the, the theme of, of not a lot of people running around. Same situation last night, uh, thankfully, as there was uh, the night before and, uh, and yesterday. So, again, going into our now our third operational period without an arrest, and even last night we didn't, we had no citations. So we're seeing a lot of people that are, uh, that are really doing what we're asking them to do and kind of staying out of those areas. And as you uh, just heard uh, Chief Brunton mention, you know, getting those resources in to repair the roads, to prepare uh, power lines and things like that, which are obviously pieces of, uh, of the plan to repopulate the, those areas and to make sure that that happens uh, quickly. So last night, as I mentioned uh, at, the, at the last press conference, 66 uh, officers running around last night making sure that basically everything is safe. Uh, again, we're going to continue that uh, today with, uh, with 70 deputies and officers, 30 from our agency. 20 from inside the county with our allied partners here from different agencies uh, inside Santa Cruz County and then 20 mutual aid from over the hill. Uh, last night we responded to 14 calls for service, six welfare checks, and I'm going to touch on a couple of those uh, here in just a minute and eight suspicious people. So unfortunately last night though uh, we did get a welfare check uh, uh, for a 63 year old woman who was last spoken to uh, on Monday. So her friend last talked to her Monday evening hadn't heard from her in a couple days and so she called us and, uh, and we went out to her home in Felton and unfortunately found her deceased. Um, we believe it's natural causes at this point which, which caused her death. Uh, there was no signs of foul play, no signs of forced entry, anything like that which would give us any suspicion that anybody did anything to her uh, or caused her death but, uh, but nonetheless really kind of a sad note um, as far as that's concerned and then uh, secondly, a welfare check for someone who potentially had, uh, so they, they, this person evacuated from the area uh, in, uh, in Boulder Creek. They had been, you know, they'd done what we asked them to do. They left the area uh, and uh, we were staying with a friend up until, uh, up until Monday. And so um, they left sometime Monday evening. Uh, their friend called us today, uh, during the night, last night, to say they hadn't heard from him because there was a conversation as this person wanted to go back, try to sneak back into the evacuated area to their home. And so right now we're, we're actively looking for that person to find out kind of where they are um, and make sure that they're okay. 
So, uh, you know, I'd just reiterate um, a couple things. One is that we want to get you back home. We really do. Uh, but there are dangers to sneaking back into the evacuated area uh, that, I mean, if you just, you just don't know. I mean, you might not know the terrain. Uh, you might not know the area. You could get lost. And, and then, you know, we want to we want to help you but what it what it does is it it divides our resources in the sense that you know we're uh we're going to you know we're going to send people to 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 find you and in this case that's exactly what we're going to do and and then and that's okay too we want to make sure this person's okay i just want to discourage people from 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 doing that you know so that uh, it doesn't divide our resources but nonetheless if we find this person um i will definitely let you know and that's what we're doing right now on another piece of that is is again if you, if, you, if you haven't heard from a friend, and that's how these two calls came in, I, I would encourage you that if you haven't heard from someone uh, and you think that they remained in the evacuated area or potentially were returning, please give us a call uh, at our dispatch number. That's 831-471-1121, 831-471-1121. Give us a call, and we'll do exactly what we did last night. You know, We do security checks on homes to make sure nobody's uh, breaking in. But at the same time, we want to make sure that people are safe and accounted for. And so if you haven't heard from a friend, definitely give us a call. Um, and then lastly, just to touch on uh, the, uh, the website that you heard Chief Cox mention, and I mentioned it last night, uh, you know, we, we can completely understand that uh, you'd want to know kind of the status of your house, especially if you think it's in a, dam a fire damage area. And so I just wanted to reiterate that website again. That's Santa Cruz County forward slash fire recovery forward slash damage assessment map dot ASPX. That's Santa Cruz County forward slash fire recovery slash damage assessment map dot ASPX. It'll give you some information, put your address in there, and it'll tell you whether or not your house has been damaged, it's okay, or, uh, or, or hopefully not um, destroyed. Thank you. Up next from the San Mateo County Sheriff's Office is Detective Blanksway. Good morning. No changes for San Mateo County, but we do want to say thank you to everybody who donated the diapers, baby formula, and school supplies at the San Mateo Event Center. For those of you who are interested in helping out in other ways, you can also make financial donations to Puente and Pescadero, as well as the Red Cross. We also want to say how grateful we are for all the support that we're seeing from the community, whether it's online messages or a couple restaurants have donated food, um, including Alice's Restaurant up on Skyline and 84. And um, it's just incredibly motivating. Our first responders and support staff see these messages and these comments. We've seen signs as well out in the community. And we can't tell you how much it means to us right now. So thank you very much for all of that support and gratitude. It's heard and felt. Uh, speaking next on behalf of all of the agencies in Unified Command is CAL FIRE Incident Management Team 3, IC Billy C. Uh, good morning. Obviously, uh, yesterday uh, we had great success out on the line. Uh, we had clean air able to fly our aircraft. Our folks were able to get in there and develop some perimeter control around this. Uh, there was a lot of there was a lot of uh, smoke production in the air that was very visible uh, from the Highway 17 corridor. Uh, when we get clean air like that and it's visible, the uh, fire is just slowly moving down uh, the slope uh, in and behind around the structures above Felton and Benton Loman. Um, it's very visible from this area. Obviously, we have a lot of firefighting forces on the ground, and today uh, you heard the operational plan. Uh, we're going to uh, be doing later this afternoon some burning operations uh, to control that fire on our terms. We're going to be working diligently to secure that line over the next uh, 24 to 48 hours and bring that down very safely and slowly into what we're going to consider a primary control uh, protecting these communities and locking that off. With that said, obviously, um, when the smoke starts to clear, uh, all the residents get very restless about uh, trying to get back in and wanting to know when the evacuation orders and warnings will be lifted. We're going to be working with our counterparts and the law enforcement agencies uh, to develop a strategic plan to start bringing folks in. We've already started to identify areas uh, that we can potentially start looking at lifting some evacuation orders and moving them to evacuation warnings. So please be patient. It's a process. We're going to work through it. 
Obviously, our biggest concern when we start bringing folks back in and lifting some of the orders is making sure that we build a good, strong foundation for all those residents, meaning that we have good roadways for them to travel on, we have secured all the utilities and make sure it's safe, and make sure we have water for them so they have the essential necessities to live with. So that's the pieces that we're going to continue to work on, identifying those, fixing any issues, and getting these folks back to essential normalcy as soon as possible. Thank you. And our final speaker this morning from the local CAL FIRE unit, uh, CAL FIRE unit chief Ian Larkin. Good morning. Uh, as, as you see, we're starting to make some progress. Though it's slow um, and methodical, it is, it is happening. Um, for those that uh, um, are using the uh, website for Santa Cruz County to determine uh, if your property has uh, sustained any damage or has been destroyed, uh, I just want to make a, a preface that take note that our damage inspection is still ongoing uh, and it has not fully been completed yet. Because uh, your house may not be represented on that uh, map as having damage or being destroyed, um, as the damage inspection uh, continues to move forward, uh, those uh, numbers may increase uh, and will represent uh, those properties that uh, are added to that each day. So um, be mindful that uh, just because it's not there today doesn't mean it might not be there tomorrow. So for those uh, folks that have uh, sustained damage or need assistance, uh, there's a couple um, uh, areas that I'm going to give you right now that uh, will, can be of assistance to you, and that's um, you can go to the disasterassistance.gov website. That's a disasterassistance.gov, um, and there's some resources there for uh, folks that um, are in need. And then also um, you can download the FEMA app um, from the Android and Apple platforms. Um, once again, that's the FEMA app. If you don't have the ability to download that application, you can call FEMA directly, and that's at 1-800-621-FEMA. That's 1-800-621-FEMA, and there are some uh, assistance there. Uh, for those that may have small businesses um, that need assistance, you can also go to the uh, Small Business Administration. Uh, that's the Small Business Administration, and there are resources available to you um, to help you with that uh, effort. Um, once again, uh, the troops on the ground uh, and the incident management team that are here, along with our cooperating agencies, both the sheriff departments from San Mateo and Santa Cruz County, are working diligently and as quickly as possible to make the environment as safe as possible for us to uh, repopulate the areas um, uh, that are affected. Um, so uh, please uh, bear with us as we move through this. Uh, we're moving as fast as we can, and we're going to do our best attempt to get this uh, wrapped up and uh, get you guys back home soon. Thank you. All right, happy to answer any questions you might have. Can we talk more about the uh, fire operations happening in Felton? Yes, yeah, so the question is related to the uh, firing operation happening around Felton. Chief Brunton can allude to that. So the, uh, the burnout operation uh, that, that we're going to be doing, it's something we typically do. It's a, it's a common um, strategy that we utilize. And basically, when we're working in, in hospital train or very large fires, uh, we const essentially we construct a line and we use uh, fire as a tool to eliminate the fuels between that control line and the on oncoming fire. Um, it's very controlled. It's a very planned event. Uh, we are very fortunate on this event by, by happenstance that you have the individual that we have running that operation, um, along with two others, of, including myself, or have the highest qualification in the state of California, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, to, to conduct burn operations. So uh, by chance, we happen to have all those people in the right place, and, uh, and we do this on a very regular basis. So it's something we're very comfortable with. It's nothing that we do haphazard. We, it's a very planned event. We have a lot of resources when we do this event. We put our best resources, and we have to take them from the other parts of the fire and put them into play. We do that because it is we take it seriously, and especially when we're working around uh, communities, population centers. So I can assure you, you have some of the most highly qualified, the high, most highly experienced individuals there to run this firing operation. The the, the, the top, uh, the four top personnel that are running this, you have well over a 100 years experience of firefighting experience and wildland firefighting. So. We, we don't take this lightly, we take this very seriously, uh, and we're going to be conducting these operations uh, over the next couple days in a very methodical, very planned process, because it is going to be the best tool uh, to, to, you know, to uh, make sure that we put in good line, 
and that we're able to finish this, this operation off because of the terrain, the fuels, uh, having to adjust our strategy, it, it is going to be our best tool. So um, although it does make people nervous in introducing uh, fire into the environment, especially from the outside, but I can assure you that, that you have the best people available uh, doing that job. Are those Certainly, it's it's going to be um, basically from uh, Am uh, Felton Empire Grade Road uh, moving uh, into and through uh, a portion of the state park and just to, to the south of the community of Ben Loman. We have control line established in that first phase uh, that will be conducting the burning in the late afternoon through the evening. We're utilizing our incident meteorologists and our fire behavior analysts to help us uh, put the plan together and uh, and do it at the best possible time so we have the best possible results. Uh, from the operation. So yes, it will be visible because you will see increased smoke production, but again, it's a very controlled uh, situation, and um, yeah, but you will see more smoke. Are those lines helping, I mean, it's still burning acres, but it's not exploding from, say, 79 to 90,000. It's like a 1,000 a day, so is it slowing it down? Correct. So question being that is is it slowing, the, the is the main fire slowing in progress? It isn't explosive. Correct. It's not explosive. We're not seeing the, the runs, the fire runs that we experienced a week ago. Um, the weather has changed. It's uh, mitigated the intensity of the fire. Um, this weather pattern is, is fantastic because it, it raises the humidities. Uh, the fuel moisture is gained slightly. So considering the conditions that we have with the drought and the dry fuel moistures, it's the best possible uh, case and it's the best possible time for us to burn. As we start getting into the weekend, it is going to dry out a little bit more. Um, so any fire that is there, we'll see a slight bit of intensity of the fire but nothing that we've seen over the past uh, week by any means. Can you talk about the progress of damage inspection? You want to hand on to Right now we have a total of uh, 12 damage inspection teams in the field daily. Uh, they're basically working on the perimeter of the fire right now and areas that we have access into. Obviously the interior of this fire is very difficult to get to. There's many, many roadways, several structures within inside the perimeter of the fire. We're working diligently with uh, heavy equipment, falling teams, and our resources to get those areas cooled off, opened up, and passable. Obviously, there's going to be some time to get to several areas within the perimeter of this. There's a lot of burned out bridges and damaged bridges. Uh, roadways are going to have to be rebuilt in some areas so we can get those folks in. But I'm working today to identify basically a percentage of this incident that the damage inspection team has validated their information and will be able to continue to provide not only the, uh, the details as far as how much is damaged, but what percent of the entire incident has been inspected. Any other questions? With regard to Scotts Valley, uh, for the residents, uh, is there a timeline when that uh, may be repopulated, when they may be able to come back in, seeing as how weather's favorable? Sure. The, the question is related to um, when Scotts Valley might see repopulation. And I don't know if the sheriff will be able to speak to that or Billy. So obviously, you heard a lot about the operation today. Uh, if we can successfully go through the next 24 to 30 hours, get the perimeter established in there. Um, over the course of the next 72 to 120 hours, that's anywhere from four to five days out, um, we will look at hopefully bringing some sense of normalcy back to this area. Obviously, it's all dependent upon weather conditions, how successful we are out on the ground itself, but we are have detailed plans to strategically start moving folks back in when it's safe to do so. So I don't want to guarantee an exact time frame, but we are working diligently to make sure when we do it, it's safe and effective and efficient, and we bring that normalcy back to these residents. Uh, with the discovery of the woman uh, in Felton and the person who's missing from Boulder Creek, how does that change your missing persons report? Yeah, the question is related to the missing persons reports and how the two additional change the, the factors, and I'll let the sheriff answer that. 
Sure. So in terms of missing people, uh, the, the gentleman that we're looking for today would bring our total from five, uh, from uh, up to six now. So six missing people that we are looking for. So there were seven yesterday, you found one. We found two yesterday. And then this brings the total up to six. One deceased, one okay? Uh, no, actually the decedent, the person that passed away actually was not part of, that was not one of the missing people that we were looking for. So we didn't have any information that when she wasn't technically missing until uh, until uh, yesterday when we got the call that, uh, of the welfare check to go check on her. That's when we found her deceased. So we weren't, act we weren't because she was being, um, in, because she was in contact with her friend, she wasn't technically missing. So there were seven yesterday and you were located too. That's correct. So seven missing persons cases as of yesterday, we located two of them, and then uh, and then again last night had we had the report of the the missing man, so we're looking for him. So that brings the total to six. With um, with uh, the National Guard finishing their Cal Fire training of their first the task force, do we know yet how those resources are being deployed around the state? Yeah, uh, the question is related to how the deployment of National Guard resources are deployed across the state, and Chief C can answer that. The 12 hand crews that uh, we're training down in the uh, San Luis Obispo unit of CAL FIRE uh, are being deployed to the Sonoma Lake Napa unit. With that said, we anticipate to see some of our Type 1 crews released from that incident and strategically moved into here so we can continue to. Uh, construct some of the technical line on that Highway 9 corridor. Uh, we've been in discussions with both our uh, North Region Operations Center and the other ICs on incidents, and we're going to be strategically maneuvering resources throughout all the incidents to meet the needs of all the incidents. Obviously, there's a lot of handline construction and technical construction that needs to go um, on the high, Highway 9 corridor. So uh, we've asked for our Type 1 crews to be inserted in there for a spe specific amount of time so we can accomplish that mission. There is a second group of National Guard uh, personnel that are going through training right now, and they should be available here in the next five or six days. Can you explain what Type 1 means? Uh, type 1 is just a level of training and a level of experience, as well as they've met uh, the standards uh, for line production. So usually into a, a medium-sized uh, brush field that's a, a minimum, a minimum of 20 per, foot per person, and they have the leadership and qualifications on the crews. Thank you. Well, Randy Gordon from KBCZ, Boulder Creek Community Radio. Um, can you tell us um, about the uh, operations to, uh, to, com to build those lines along the Highway 9 corridor um, and whether or not they're putting any structures in jeopardy? Sure, the question is related to the, con the line being constructed on the Highway 9 corridor uh, and any concern about structures that may be in that area. Chief Brunt will be able to answer that. So as I've said before, the, uh, the line construction be, uh, along the 9 corridor uh, is, is very difficult uh, compared to what we typically see. What happens, we have uh, steep terrain, heavy fuels, uh, we have a number of structures in and amongst uh, that area, uh, some on some very precarious areas that have been built. So it makes it a challenge in, in order to put that line in. Some of it we put in with, with the bulldozers, some of it, a lot of it we cannot because of what I just explained. So we've been utilizing hand lines to do that. Uh, what we've done so far is we've done a uh, line that has only checked up the fire, basically uh, slowed it, its progress, and then herded it around the structures, especially in the upper part of the, of the valley. The lower part we've been able to continually uh, construct lines, so we're kind of pioneering, if you will, ahead of, ahead of the, the, um, up the valley. And then we come in behind, improve that line, get it uh, really solid, and, uh, and then if, when we have to do burn operations, it has to be very well, meticulously done so that it'll sustain uh, holding that fire. Uh, with the crews that Chief uh, C mentioned, the more the Type 1 crews, getting those in, that's what their expertise is. Uh, as he said, it's based on complexity. That's why they're a Type 1 crew. Um, their typing is not done lightly. So we're bringing in these individuals, uh, and we have only had a small handful. Now that we will bolster our ranks, we will be able to put in more line we will be able to get around those structures, we will, and, uh, and that line construction will be put in more rapidly and, and all the way up uh, through the Highway 9 corridor. So uh, it's a little spotty as we go further up the, the, the uh, 
corridor, but on the lower part, it's, it's becoming bolstered. We have good solid line put in, and we're going to continue to do so uh, as the days come and we get the resources in. All right, everyone up here will be available for questions one-on-one -on -one afterwards. I just want to say thank you to, uh, obviously, the community and all the, for all the support and patience uh, as we get this incident mitigated. Uh, we will have another press conference this evening at 6 p.m., same location. Uh, this concludes the 6 a.m. press conference. Thank you.